Hi guys, I am super excited. We are here at St. Mary's River with expert fly fisherman, Kelly Latch. I'm gonna catch me some fish. Kelly, thanks for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to be down because in, in my most recent years, I've really seen a resurgence, or maybe just within my own life, it's come into view a little bit more, of, of people of my, my age and within my community getting out on the river and specifically fly fishing. So I came after you in this conversation because I really wanted to, I wanted to learn more and I hear you're one of the best. Uh, Thank you. That's very, very nice of you. Yeah, fly fishing has become a bigger and bigger sport, especially in the Kootenays now. We're seeing more and more people, especially folks that are trying to be outdoorsy more, mm -hmm. wanting to do more hiking and that, that, that fly fishing just falls right in along with those other sports too as well. Yeah, I find like the quality of life is really the, the aspect that brings people into it. And it has a lot to do with health and wellness. When you yeah. think about it, I think when I was younger, I didn't, I didn't see that part of fishing. But now coming into age, it, it's one of the, the most dominant reasons to get out into the water is to have that peace. Sure, and when you're in a beautiful place like we live in the yeah. Kootenays, it, it's so easy to get to these pieces of water and fish, fish. The fish we have are really relatively easy to catch. So they're really, really fun. It's all catch and release. It's yeah. super, super fun. Excellent. Tell me about the fish that we have, specifically the St. Mary, okay. but what other waterways do, do you run through? Um, and as a collective, what do, you, what do you find? Well, we, the Kootenays has probably some of the best river fishing in North America. And we have clients that travel all, from all over the world to come visit here. And it's mostly because they fish for one of two fish. And one is a West Slope cutthroat yeah. trout, and the other is a bull trout. Both of those species are very coveted by fly fishermen as a catch and release species. Okay. And uh, they're super fun to fish for. Wonderful. You know, as you'll see. I think something that I'm interested to know is what, what started you? Where did your, when you were young, there was yep. a passion point. Yep. Um, what is that? Uh, it started when I was a little boy. I, it, I always tell people it skips a generation. My, my father didn't fish in at all, but my grandfather was an absolute maniac fly fisherman. And so it skipped a generation and ended up with me. Very so cool. I've been doing it since I was a little boy. So there's a lot of nostalgia in it for you. Yeah, there, there was, especially at the start, yeah. there was an awful lot, but then it took on an all other life of its own, right? Excellent. So. You travel a lot too, so you yeah. have a great many stories, I have no doubt, but is there one that stands out um, above the rest? Yeah, and it's kind of surprising, you know, when you, when you kind of fish a lot of places in the world and travel a lot to fish, people think that it's always about the biggest fish you've ever caught that's the most important. And, and honestly speaking, for me, probably the most magical place I ever visited was with, I was with my wife Karen and I and another friend of ours, and we were in West Yellowstone, in Yellowstone National Park, and we fished a river called the Fire Hole. And it's probably one of the most magical places in the, the trout, we're all little brown trout and the biggest one was about 12 inches long yeah. but we caught lots of them what was amazing was it was one of those days where it started to lightly snow oh, and wow. the geysers the steam off the geysers were everywhere and we had a herd of buffalo crossing the Firehole river just above us at essentially the same time. you were in a national geographic magazine it literally is you couldn't have <laughs> pictured it better and it was it was just Absolutely. And magic. what a beautiful memory with your wife as well. Yeah. Because you guys are a team. You yeah. do this together. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. It's actually, they'll tell you a lot of times it's hard for husbands and wives to work together, but Karen's passion for fly fishing rivals mine. So <laughs> it works out pretty well. That's wonderful. Yeah. Very good. Um, so what, so with St. Mary Angler fly fishing, yep. how long have you been in business? Uh, we started the retail store in 2000. Okay. So we've been in business 21 years. And then so what, 
what aspects do you have under the business? What do you do? Well, the business is a retail store, but it's also a guide service. Mm -hmm. So we, we run anywhere from two to five guides. Obviously, the pandemic has slowed things down a bit for our traveling guests. So, but we also do uh, hosted trips uh, to many destinations all over the world, particularly Christmas Island in the South Pacific and wow. the Bahamas, Long Island in the Bahamas. Remind Andrews. me to look into that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so through the company locally, mm -hmm. um, where do you find most of your tours heading? We, we guide primarily on the St. Mary River. We okay. have four different stretches on it. We float out of rafts and uh, we guide the Elk River as well too. We guide on the Skookumchuck. We, we take anglers to the Bull, which is arguably one of the most beautiful rivers in our area. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Excellent. And then, so do you find yourself, there's gotta be a certain linguistic kind of um, welcome when, when you have new people coming into the area. Is there, is there a, a regular statement that you say to new people coming into a tour about our area or about safety or about species? What's your go-to for it, new? It's tourists? more about what the, their expectations always are that they're going to go out and they're going to have an experience. But I think they underestimate how, how incredible their experience is really going to yeah. be. Like most places in the world, I think a lot of us take for granted how beautiful we, a place we live in right here. Yeah. And I think once you get on the river, you start to really see just how beautiful this region really is. And it, it is an incredibly beautiful place. You're a memory maker. Oh, yeah. That's what you get to do for, yeah. for a living. That is pretty much what How we do. How wonderful. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. So is there, on the water yeah. and within your industry, is there a conversation about sustainability? Yeah. In fact, it's probably the, one of the number one factors in our, in our fishing industry. You know, our, our fisheries have for many, many years been under a lot of different threats, whether it was was extensive logging, but we, we need those things. We need logging industries, we need industries in our area for our communities to, to survive. And I think our technology is finally getting to the point that we can balance those things. It really comes down to you need companies like ours as stewards of our water. And that's, that's something that most people maybe don't realize that guides catch a lot of fish but we're the first ones to raise the They're alarms if there too. is something wrong yeah. with our fishery. As an example, the St. Mary just went under a time closure because of warming water. And uh, while we're having this conversation, we're out here early in the morning. And the reason we're out here early is because it's easier on the fish to catch them earlier in the morning when the water temperatures are quite cool. And as the water warms, it gets to too warm a temperature and then it's not as good to be fishing over them. I find you to be quite an educator. Uh, we, yeah. we first um, started speaking earlier this morning and I have learned a great many things Good. just from being at your side. So I imagine you bring that into each and every tour, every time you have someone out on the water. Yeah, a little, but I, you know, you, could, you, you sort of try and read what, what are, why are people coming on a trip? Are they coming because they want to catch a lot of fish yeah. or are they coming because they really just want to have an, an amazing beautiful experience on the river yeah. fish will always be part of that but the act of fishing doesn't always equate to catching which you may see a little later on here but we're going to make try and do everything we can yeah. to help you with that uh, so you mentioned earlier that there's kind of a growth in in women coming yeah. into the sport yeah. uh, do you find that that the younger generation is coming and having that interest and in getting out on the water. I think I think they're the biggest group. It, honestly, That's they are the largest. We, I see more young families, particularly with younger kids that are yeah. getting them started. And we, where you see that is in how they purchase good uh, fishing rods and gear for their kids. Yeah. And where 15 years ago, it was pretty much uh, dominated by 35 year olds and above and even older. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing more and more and more young people. I have, uh, we had two new doctors that just came to the area. They moved here for the lifestyle yeah. and they came into the fly shop specifically for the single reason that they've got a young family, but they want to start fishing so yeah. that they can have their kids fishing as well because they know it's such a big part of the lifestyle of the Kootenays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
So stewardship, leadership, education, sure. these are all things that are a part of your business, not just getting out on the water and catching the big one. No, you know, catching a big one is really fun, but okay, that wait, also but comes. Tell me about your big one. What one? The big one. The biggest fish I've ever caught? Do you caught? have that story? Do I have that yes. story? Sure. I'll lean in, it's important. Okay, okay. So the biggest fish I've ever caught, if we're talking freshwater, are we talking saltwater? One of both. Okay, uh, largest saltwater fish. Uh, I landed a 25 pound giant trevally in Christmas Island with an eight weight fly rod, which Ooh. is actually considered almost impossible because the species is so powerful. Um, so a 25 giant trevally tr is about that big. Yeah. Um, so they have an incredible amount of power they're super, super strong, so they're normally fished with with a very heavy, powerful rod. But he, this fish happened to come into a shallow area, and I made a couple good casts, and yeah. and I hooked him. And it, the fight lasted probably 35 minutes to 40 minutes before I could land him. And that's a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah. That's probably the largest. I've hooked bigger fish than that, but that was probably the most exciting fishing because I was using a tool to fight the fish with that was pretty much underpowered with what it what that species could handle yeah uh biggest trout in the kootenays probably on the columbia river where i guide over by trail bc uh pretty common for us to catch rainbows upwards of 27 inches which would go eight seven eight pounds in oh, the God. river which are really incredibly strong rainbow trout so nice those are my big ones you want to get out there and show me a thing or two? Yeah, but we need to get you into a set of hip boots. So I think we have a pair over here for you. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. okay. Kelly, this is like your backyard, huh? It is. It is. I, I love it down here. It's really fun. Take it easy Slow coming across. Slow and steady, right, yep. Kelly? That's right. Slow and steady. Nice and easy across. Don't We're go quick. Winning the race. It's almost like walking like a duck. Like you keep the, your legs a, a little bit apart. They say in safety. It's not very ladylike. Like it's not ladylike crossing streams. So I've got a little bug on here, almost like a little grasshopper. So all I want you to do is when you take the rod in your hand, is I want you to take your arm and just take the rod straight up and straight out. strategy is I have this beautiful run and there's a bunch of fish out here and I'm going to try and trick one of them or several of them to eat a fly by presenting it correctly with that fly run. Oh, Kelly! Oh! Had him for a second. Had him for a split second. Good ah! girl. <laughs> Try again. You notice how much fun you were having just practicing? In my little baby casting, yes, yeah. Yeah, just excellent. in the practicing. So that's as much fun as anything, is to be able to get on the stream and start working up a run and you're seeing a run like this. So as you become a more, more of a fly fisherman or fly fisherwoman, you're gonna start to realize that you'll see runs like this and you'll start getting excited because you know what's in there. People in the industries like the medical community, like doctors and lawyers love it, executives. As a, as a guide, I see more of those type of people in very high stress jobs because not because they're wealthy, because they're high stressed and they have limited time. So they want to maximize their relaxation time. And fly fishing is one of those avenues that they use a lot. And I think the misconception is, is that, you're, that it's not a health and wellness sport, but the mental health alone that you're gaining and, and that release, uh, I think fundamentally goes above and beyond. Well, a lot of people don't know this, but during the pandemic, 
Fishing was considered one of the essential service industries to stay open. Wow. They kept us open because we provided the equipment to help people get out, out in the open air where we were safe. Well, Dolly, you've hooked five. The only reason we're not landing them, I think it's the screaming in between the <gasps> hookups that might be the issue. <laughs> so, I, I didn't really. <laughs> oh, 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 like, like, like I said, the screaming in between is the issue. I. <laughs> So we've had a magnificent day here on the St. Mary's with Kelly from St. Mary Angler Fly Fishing and it was an absolute phenomenal experience. I learned a lot. Yep. You are a wonderful teacher Thank and you. just a fun person to be around out on the water. Well, I have fun. Thank That's you for your thing. time. Yeah, you're welcome. You know, uh, you you hooked six. We, I, we, but so there was a there was a fair amount of screaming involved every time one came and ate it though. I am who I am, Kelly. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you for being such a strong community leader in in just facilitating the growth of your industry in educating families, youth, experienced uh, fishermen. Well, I think it's important that we that we spend time fishing with people. It isn't just about our business and making money. This is a lifestyle thing. Mm -hmm. So it's as much, I'm part of the community, just like everybody's part of the community. And it's really nice to actually be able to help people come out and really enjoy these outdoors that we have. It's really amazing. You're building quality of life. Quality of life. Kelly, thank you for your time. You're welcome, thank you. You ever find yourself with music out on the water? That's. Not something that I would like. I don't know many fly fishermen want to have music around. Yeah. They want to they want to be out here doing exactly what you're doing right there. Very nice. I only ask because I have this innate need to, to sing Old Man River currently. <laughs> Old Man, right? You can sing along. I don't think so.